In this lecture, we continue in chapter one and we're moving into section 1.6, which is about angle pairs and their relationships. So we have two objectives in this section. We want to learn special relationships between pair of angles. That'll be the first thing we'll do a lot of definitions. And then in the second part, we'll use algebra to find angle measures. All right, so we're going to start with some definitions. Two angles are called adjacent angles if they share a common side and a common vertex, but no interior points are common. Like for example, angle one and two here are adjacent angles because they have a common side and the same vertex. The same with angles three and four, right? They have a common side and a similar vertex. Each of these are adjacent angles. All right, two angles are called vertical angles if their sides form opposite rays. So for example, one and three are vertical angles, right? Like for example, what I'm saying here is we have angle one, look at it, I'm being on top of this line. Here's angle three and it's on the bottom of it. The same thing with two and four, these are vertical angles because if we have this ray here, I'm sorry, ray from here and here, these two opposite rays, this ray, this ray form kind of a line and two is on top and four is on the bottom. All right, two adjacent angles form a linear pair if their non-common sides are opposite rays, like angle five and six here are because here's angle five and its vertex is right here. So five is with this ray and six is with this ray over here. So angles five and six are opposite, all right, each other and thus they form a linear pair. All right, special angle pairs. Two angles are complementary if their measure have a sum of 90 degrees. Each angle is called the complement of each other. So if you look here, here, this right here is a 90 degree angle. Angle one and angle two, if you were to add their two sums, you would get um, 90 degrees. Also over here, these are two different rays, two different angles. But if you take angle A and you add it to angle B, 25 plus 65 gets you 90 degrees. They would also be complementary. Piggybacking off that, two angles are supplementary if their measure have a sum of 180 degrees. Each angle is called the supplement of the other. So like here, we have a horizontal line, angles three and four, if you were to add them together, you get 180 degrees. Same with this angle C and angle D here. If you take 63 and 117 and add it together, you get 180. Angles C and D are supplementary angles. All right. So let's do an example. Let's talk about identifying angles and linear pairs. Use the figure here to answer each statement as true or false. So angle two and three are vertical angles. Hmm. Remember what I said about before, vertical angles have to be like on opposite sides of a, of a line or opposite side of opposite rays. So this is false, all right? The sides of the angles do not form opposite rays. Next, angles two and four, are they vertical? Yes, yes, the sides of the angles form opposite rays. Another way to think about it here is here's one side of angle two, here's one side of angle four, they form opposite rays. The same with this side, this side here. All right, angles three and four form a linear pair. Yes, this is true. They are adjacent angles and their non-common sides form opposite rays. Angles three and one form a linear pair. This is false. They do not have adjacent sides at all. They have a common vertex, but they do not have adjacent, side, adjacent, adjacent angles. All right, use the figure to identify each pair of complementary angles. There's a bunch here, actually. Remember, they just have to sum to 90 degrees. Angles 1 and 2 there sum to 90 degrees. There's a bunch. Angles 2 and 3 sum to 90 degrees. Angles 3 and 4 sum to 90 degrees. And angles 1 and 4 sum to 90 degrees. So just from that figure there, there's four sets, four pairs of complementary angles. All right, use the figure to identify each pair of supplementary. So remember, they have to sum to 180 degrees. Well, there's a bunch here too. Angles one and two, you add those two together, you get 180 degrees. Angles two and three, you do the same thing, you get 180 degrees. Angles three and four, added together get 180 degrees. And finally, angles four and angle one, right? When you add those together, you get 180 degrees. 
All right, let's do another example about finding measure of complementary angles and supplementary angles. Given that the angle of some measure P is equal to 73 degrees, all right, we've got two questions. If A and P are supplementary angles, find the measure of angle A. And if angle P or angle B and P are complementary angles, find the measure of angle B. Well, in the first part, since we know that they're supplementary, when you add these two angles, measure of angle A and measure of angle P, they got to be 180 degrees. So just moving over measure of angle P, take 180 degrees, subtract 73. That means the measure of angle A is 170 degrees. Similarly, on the other side, right, complementary angle sum to 90. So subtract the measure of angle P over, supplement in the 73 degrees, subtract you get that the measure of angle B is 17 degrees. All right, a couple more definitions here. An angle bisector. An angle bisector is a ray that divides an angle into two adjacent angles that are congruent, meaning they have the same measure. So what we're saying here is, remember it's a ray, so ray BP, so it starts here and shoots out this way, is an angle bisector of angle AP. C. All that means then is that angle one and angle two are the same because remember an angle bisector cuts it right in half so that they're even angles. All right, so use angle bisector to find angle measures, right? So use the figure shown to find the measure of each unknown angle. So we've got this figure here. First thing, we, and all we know that angle CAE right here is 62 degrees. The first thing I want to find is the measure of angle BAC. Well, by the tick marks here, the, the curve marks here, they're telling me that they're the same degrees, so they're congruent, or same measure, so they're congruent. So ray AC is the angle bisector of BAC, all right, and thus the measure of angle CAE is equal to the measure of angle BAC, or 62 degrees. Finally, if we want to find the measure of angle BAE, well, that's going to be equal to the measure of angle BAC, plus CAE, they're both 62 degrees, and they sum to 124 degrees. All right, another example, finding angle measures. In the figure, ray QY bisects angle RQZ, so it bisects it right down the middle, right? What that means is that it creates two congruent angles. From the value of X, then find the measure of angle RQY, so angle RQY, this 2X, and the measure of angle YQZ, this 3X minus 11 degrees. What is the thing? If it bisects, that means these two measures are equal. So all we have to do is substitute in here and do a little bit of algebra. First thing I'm going to do is minus the 2X over, then I'm going to add the 11X over, or the 11 over, and I get 11 is equal to X. Now just remember with these algebra ones, that's not the final answer here. What we want to do is now solve for the angles. So the measure of R Q Y that's equal to 2x, so 2 times 11 is 22 degrees. And then the measure of Y Q Z is 3x minus 11, or 3 times 11 minus 11, or also 22 degrees. All right, thus x is equal to 11, and measure of R Q Y is equal to measure of Y Q Z, which is 22. All right, let's find the measure of angle. Let's look at this more complicated. Ooh. Solve for the measure of x and y, then find the measure of each angle. All right, well, what you're going to want to do is um, work with the two angles that have x's together, so the 4x plus 8 and the x plus 47, and the two angles that have the y, so y plus 42 y or y minus 12. All right, to solve for x or y, it doesn't matter. We will choose two angles in x, like I was saying, and these two angles for linear pairs, right, which means they're opposite rays basically being combined, right? Thus, their sum is 180 degrees, right? Angles that form linear pairs, like we said, are supplementary. All right, so let's do the measure of angle GFK, which is this one right here, plus the measure of angle GFH. We're going to add those two, and they're going to be 180 degrees. So replacing with their algebraic expressions, Combining like terms, then subtracting the 55 over, and then finally dividing by 5, get x is equal to 12. 
25. Right? Now that's not the measure of the angles, that's just what x is equal to. So the same thing over on the other side here. Right? Take the measure of angle KFJ right here, the measure of angle JFH right here, add them together, get 180. Place the algebraic expressions. Combine like terms. Subtract the 30 over. Divide by 5, you get y is equal to 30. Now we're not done. Now what we have to finally do is substitute these back in. So take our solutions, our x is equal to 25 and y is equal to 30, and use substitution to find the measure of each angle. So the measure of angle GFK, plugging in 25, get 72 degrees. The measure of angle GFH, plugging in 25, this right here, you get 108 degrees. Measure of angle KFJ, plugging in 30, because remember we're using Y now, get 180 degrees. The measure of angle JFH, plugging in 30, you get 72 degrees.